Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so, been a couple of days, finally have another day that I can work on this. Um, so today, we are building basically the support for the bed. So what I mean is, we've got these two posts basically done. I actually have one, the second one right there, I'll show you in a minute. Um, it's all set up to get uh, uh, wood filled. I did a rough sand on it to kind of knock down some of the edges, some of the glue. I'll show you that more in a minute, but we'll get there. So we're going to be working on the base of the bed, which is this frame here. And uh, so we've got our two by sixes, uh, one by ones, which are these posts here. These are, again, were originally per this design, two by fours, we're doing two by six. So two by six, one by ones, and then uh, the slats are oak. Uh, one by fours, if I'm not mistaken, which are those guys right there. You want those to be um, a stronger wood because obviously that's going to carry the weight. Um, so we're going to get started on that. I'm going to get cutting. Um, I'll show you this over here. Like I said, I did a quick rough sand on it. Uh, hit it with some 80 grit to kind of knock down some of the glue. And now we got some uh, wood filler in here. Um, you can see, I'm going to let that dry up, um, while we work on the base. Uh, so I will have to pause at some point to flip this around and wood glue the other side, but we got our chop saw set back up. Two by sixes are right there. I'm going to grab my two by, or uh, one by ones, which are one by twos. I don't remember these guys, basically those guys. Um, Two by twos, maybe? I don't know. We're gonna grab those and uh, we're gonna cut things to length and then we'll um, start screwing stuff together. So, enjoy the video. Okay guys, so we've got our uh, two by twos cut and uh, we've got our two by sixes cut. So we kind of did the same process we did with those, um, checked for square at the ends, then looked at the wood, kind of saw we had 20 inches to cut off on each of those, figured out which side's gonna be the best, um, try and cut out as much of the nasty stuff as we could. They're not the best pieces of wood, but we'll clean them up, make them look good enough. So uh, what we got next, is we gotta secure these guys. So they've actually, in these blueprint, told us that we need to be drilling holes every 12 inches on these one uh, two by twos to secure them. So that's gonna be what we do next. Then we're gonna secure it to that. Then we're probably gonna go through and wood fill those rails um, and sand them and basically finish those. And then after that's done, then we're probably gonna cut the slats out of our oak board. Um, cause I think that's going to be the best way to get a good quality finished product on every square inch of this thing, rather than making the whole base and then trying to sand into the nooks and crannies. I think that's going to be the best option. A few things. What I did here, just to give you an idea, is I went ahead and looked at what way our wood is warped. Uh, and if you look, so I marked this as the outside along with that one. If we flip this, you can kind of see, I think that there's a bit of a bow 
and that this side bows inward at the end there. And kind of the same, probably more so with that one, you can kind of see the bow. Um, so we wanted to set these so the bowed edge was up um, because what we're going to do is we're going to glue it, clamp it down, and put these screws in. Now, I bought the wrong screws. So I bought a crap ton of these guys. These are going to be great for the slats because they're nice and short, so they'll go through the slats into the two bys real easy. But even recessed, these will not go into that two by six. So I'm going to have to run to the hardware store uh, and get some more get some more screws but you know this is the only place I'm gonna use those ones um, so I just need like 14 of them so that I can do that because uh, once that's done we're not mounting that screws uh, I'd be more clear and show you what I'm talking about uh, again we're not mounting this with screws to these posts we're using these bed rails right here because if I build this thing I'm not getting it in the house. So we're building this part separately from the A-frames uh, and the two buys that we're gonna do here. So really all we gotta do is secure that and then secure the, the, uh, the slats here. So those guys will connect us to our A-frame once we're done. So I'm gonna run to the hardware store, get what I need there, come back, and uh, we'll start pre-drilling these holes and uh, wood glue, clamp it down as best I can. I might pick up a couple more clamps because I've only got these three, um, and we'll get that rolling. So, see you in a second. All right, so we're back from the hardware store. Uh, we got what we needed, which are, we got some one and three quarters, which once these are recessed, uh, give you an idea, those will sit real nice in there once we recess those. So we're gonna glue this uh, as well. I'm gonna make sure we have that side up, right? Cause that's our outside. Um, now this is the board, it has this nasty knot on it. So because of where we're putting these screws, see we got one spaced every 12 inches. I'm gonna make sure that this board, that this is the bottom, right? Because that's gonna make wood filling that significantly easier. And the wood glue there is gonna make that edge nice and tight. So. We're gonna go ahead, uh, I'm gonna clamp this guy down, and we're, well, we're gonna wood glue, paint it with wood glue, clamp it down, start pre-drilling to get our, uh, was it seven holes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I bought a handful of those, five bucks a pound for these. Honestly, if you're still using Phillips at this point, you're crazy. These are $5.99 a pound. $5.99 for a Torx head. Better screw all the way around. Stop using Phillips. All right, let's get started. All right guys, it's been a couple of days. Um, I figured you didn't want to see a montage that was 20 minutes long of a roughly 40 hours of me sanding. So uh, I did a lot of that, most of that off camera. Um, but we're basically done. Let me show you what we got. So these are basically finished. Um, they've all been sanded. So this one I actually had to re um, wood fill because I'm assuming with the 
Well, you can't see it too well on here, but the nasty weather we've got outside the last few days. Uh, I'm assuming it caused this to swell slightly from the moisture in the air, and it popped some of these cracks that I filled. Uh, so I went back and kind of re-wood filled that, and we'll sand that one down again. Just do some quick touch up with 320. But these are all done. So I hit these side rails initially with uh, an 80, 80 grit. Uh, wood filled it, hit it with a 120, wood filled it again, uh, hit it with a 220, wood filled it again, and then hit it with a 320. That might be overkill, the way I just continuously went back and, and re-wood filled and re-wood filled. Um, but it allowed this thing to have just a really good smooth finish in all of these areas where there was some imperfection. Now, I paid more attention uh, on these rails to the outside because that's what most people are gonna see. You know, the bottom side of this, that knot there being like that, not a big deal. No one's gonna see that. That's the bottom side of the board, you know? Um, so, if your thing is, if you decide to do something like this, and your thing is you want it to look rustic and just kind of slapped together with some wood, most of what I've done here is completely unnecessary. Um, but because we're painting these and I want it to look not store-bought, but quality, professional, I guess, um, I spent easily 40 hours, I would say, uh, over the last couple of weeks sanding and wood filling and getting these things as perfectly smooth as I possibly could for, um, for this. So uh, what we've got next is we've got to cut the slats, uh, which these guys, and then we're gonna go ahead and install those on these boards. Um, now there is something else. I've got a kind of a special surprise I'm gonna do with one of these uprights. I haven't decided which yet. Uh, Cause keep in mind, this is the inside. So that's the outside on that one. I've got something I plan on doing with one of these, um, but I've got to do a little bit more research to make sure I get the right tools and do it correctly. Um, you will probably see that bit at the very end uh, of this whole build. Um, I'm going to do that part today, but you won't see it. Um, it's gonna be added in later on in the video. So we're gonna go ahead and get these slats cut out of our oak and uh, I'll get set up and we'll get that going. All right, so there is one thing I wanna mention before I get started. These are, um, these are oak four by ones. Um, very expensive by today's standard, I imagine. I bought these shortly uh, before COVID hit, like right when prices started to come up. So these are probably incredibly expensive now. Um, I think at the time they were like 20 something bucks a foot. I imagine they're up to like 40 or 50 bucks a foot. Um, but that's not what I wanted to mention. On those rails that I did, there is one thing I wish I would have done slightly different that if you decide to do something like this or if you decide to buy these plans uh, and build this yourself, um, the one thing I would have changed is that I would have cut those, uh, both that that um, two by two and that two by six, about an inch to an inch and a half longer. And then I would have glued it and zipped it together, let it dry, and then chopped the ends down to length. Because what I ended up having to do was sand one side or the other um, pretty heavily to get those lined up. Because I did my best to get them lined up in the actual lay when I clamped them down and glued it and all that. But they still slightly moved, fraction of an inch, eighth of an inch, not a big deal to sand off. But had I just cut it a little bit longer and glued it, I could have chopped it down to length. Both of those pieces would have been perfect. So just something I learned in the process of doing that one. Uh, these, we're gonna mark uh, 40 inches each. That'll make our slats, and we're gonna pre-drill them, and we'll do some assembly. So we'll go ahead and jump into this. I'll get my board marked, and we'll start cutting stuff up.
So we've got our 10 boards cut. Um, I did a couple of different methods here you saw, uh, just to kind of show you guys that you can do a few different things. Either you can use the tape and measure every single time, or if you get the board, that's exactly the length you want it. You can just line that up on the end, mark it, cut it. So that's why you saw me do two different, diff uh, two different methods. You also might have saw, I don't know if it was really in frame, uh, I cut the furthest one out first. So I cut, you know, on that board, you saw how I did it. Um, the reason being, there is a lot of rain outside right now and wood and rain don't mix well. Even for a little bit with these boards, especially since these are the support for the mattress, I don't want to risk it. So uh, I made sure to cut it so that the long side was on the inside rather than on the outside getting rained on, even if it is just for a few seconds. Um, next thing I'm going to do, move this out of the way, set back up for sanding, and we're just gonna give these a quick hit of uh, probably 220 and then 320, just to make sure they're nice and smooth. We're just trying to get any of the rough burrs off the, uh, the surfaces or the sides. Um, so we'll get to that. So it's probably overkill at this point to hit these with 320. 220 did a great job. Um, but uh, I'm kind of the mindset that um, overkill is the best kind of kill there is. So we're gonna hit it with some 320 now and these things will be baby smooth just like everything else. Um, we'll hit that and then we're gonna start probably pre-drilling these to get ready to assemble. Um, and then we'll get to building. So pretty soon we're gonna have our frame all done and that'll be great. So back to it. Okay, those are all done. Like I said, probably overkill to do 320, but they feel really nice and smooth now. Um, definitely not necessary, but you know, best kind of kill is overkill, so. We got sideways rain, I don't know if you can see that. It's actually uh, coming in at like 45. We're supposed to have 50 mile an hour winds today, so we'll see how that turns out. Hopefully our power doesn't go out. Okay, so next up is pre-drilling some holes and countersinking. And uh, we're gonna stick with the same screws that we've been using basically. Not these guys, because these ones are a little bit too long, but same brand. 
Good old Torx heads. These ones are, I think these ones are inch and a half. Because uh, those boards are one inch and they're going into the, uh, the two by two. So with the countersink, that should be perfect. As I throw it on the ground. So those are our screws. Um, we are going to, of course, countersink them. So bust out the old countersinker. And we're actually going to drill straight through these boards just, just to make sure they don't crack. Obviously, they probably shouldn't. They're a pretty solid wood. But we're going to go ahead and countersink and uh, drill it a little bit too. So that's our next move. Time to get to work. Technically, we're doing these steps out of order per the blueprint, significantly out of order. Again, mainly because of the different size wood that we did, how we decided to go about it. We're really just using the blueprint as a guideline at this point. Um, so we're gonna do the first and the last board on this install and try and get it as square as possible. Um, so that's gonna set up, that's gonna be kind of our benchmark for our goal here, um, is to make this Let's get those first two in, and then the rest of them, as long as it's square, should go in just fine. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna go grab those bed rails, I'm gonna set those aside, and we're gonna see if we can get this lined up. So, because um, we're using different size wood, our measurements here are slightly different um, than what they show in the blueprint. And that's accounting for the four by fours rather than the two by fours. So um, our, let me show you, our A-frames over here are 45 inches from that side to that side, almost spot on, which leaves us with about an inch on either side which is what we want, because remember, this is the inside. So these are gonna be on those, and this will be mounted here, nice and tight, and that should sit right there. Might even sit right there. I'm not entirely sure. We'll see once we get to that point, once we mount it. But yeah, our dimensions are different. Um, the A-frame is correct. It's 45 inches from side to side. So this should fit perfectly. If not, um, we have to redo everything and recalculate measurements because 
It's one thing I really, really didn't consider um, was the different thicknesses of the wood, but we should be okay. This is as square as I can get it. It's about 43 inches dead on uh, at either end of this. So once I pop these two boards in, throw in the rest. Now, this guy over here went perfectly. Sunk in, no big deal, flawless. Same with over there. It was really just because this board, I didn't look at it and see, okay, I've got, uh, what was it, roughly 30-ish inches to play with. Where do I wanna cut? I probably could have avoided at least one of these cracking. So, learn from my mistakes. Make sure you inspect your boards, see what you got to work with, see what you got to cut. That being said, I think we're fine. This thing is fairly squared up, so we're just gonna throw the rest of our slats in here, and uh, the frame is done. Other than the final hardware, um, which we have to put on once we kind of measure this up. Um, sorry, not the frame is done. The entire build isn't done. We still have the vertical po or the, the horizontal post up there that we have to do, but what actually holds the bed will be done. So there's a few more things to get done after that. And then my secret surprise, of course. So let's get back to it. So let me show you what the holdup is here because obviously uh, there's a bit of an issue. Um, this diagram is real hard to read. I don't even think you can see that. Um, as far as I can tell, that says half inch spacing. And uh, well, there's five of our boards right there at half inch spacing. That ain't right. So I don't know if there's an actual number written in there because God dang, it's hard to read. Um, but it looks like it might be a six or a four or something. Whoever designed these plans, um, fix that. Highly recommend fix that. Impossible to read. I'm gonna space them out the best I can. Um, try and make it even. Divided this by 10, it turns to seven point seven and a half inches, but that obviously isn't right because that ain't calculating the actual width of the board in there as well. So I'm gonna figure this out and then we'll be back to uh, to record and kind of show you what we found um, spacing wise that actually makes sense in here. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so seriously, maker of these plans, if you watch this video, if you see this, fix that, okay? Um, this is impossible to read. Every single one of these say something and half inch. It looks like this one says six and a half and then these all say four and a half and then that one says six and a half again. It's impossible to tell, but I can tell you that spacing doesn't work. The nearest I can get, and this part blows my mind because all of those say half inch, is from this board to this board is five inches and then four and a half, 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 four and a half. There is no way that all of these boards are spaced at half an inch in any increment. Cause I've gone from two and a half all the way up to six and a half. You can't have 10 boards in here. Each of them spaced something and a half. Whoever came up with these plans, whatever you did, make that measurement more clear, more legible um, for people in the future. Cause it is impossible to read. So I'm fine with this one being, I'm fine with this one being, um, a half inch bigger a gap that's fine this is either the head or the foot of the bed it's not where the most weight is when we sleep obviously that's in the center of the bed so these being four and a half much better um we're gonna put them in and weird i i don't i don't even have words if it was what's crazy is if you take a board out of this make it nine uh and you space them all five and a half inches they fit perfectly doesn't make any sense. Anyways, we're gonna put these in place and move on.
that is fairly square. I'm actually, I'm actually really happy with how well that turned out. Um, I was real nervous going into this one because obviously if this isn't square, well, you're not getting your bed in there and you're starting over. So I was real nervous about how that was going to fit in there. Luckily, it seems like it fit fine. Um, the next thing we have to do is put in our hardware uh, on these guys, but that really is a two person job to kind of try and hold this, uh, mark where we need to be on that and mark where we need to be on that. Other than that, we have the top connecting posts. I'll go to the top of those two tips. What I'm actually gonna end up doing there, uh, if that table saw lets me, I believe that table saw will let me pitch at a 45. If it does, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a two by four and I'm gonna cut it at a 45 on either side. So it's gonna carry, it'd basically be two two by fours, but it would carry that peak all the way across from one post to the next. Now securing that, we aren't gonna be using screws. We're gonna be using some specialty hardware. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they're called helicoils. That's what we called them in the military. So I imagine that's a universal term, it might be an aircraft term. Helicoil that I'm used to is basically an insert, a metal insert that has a thread pitch on it. So the idea is that we drill through our two by four um, and into these, uh, I'm sorry, through these into our two by four and in our two by four uh, is the helicoil, which is um, you know glued in there. Then we countersink a bolt, generally a hex head uh, on the outside here that would sit flush with this, sorry, outside here that would sit flush with this face um, and that would be the bolt on there. Because if we just zip that together, we run into the issue of how do we get it in the house, right? If we just put screws in it, like we did with these guys, those big old long six inch screws that I put in there, these two are then permanently affixed to each other. And we have the issue of how do we get it into the house? How do we get it out of the house? So I've got to go find that hardware. Um, I've also got to get the tools for my special something there. Um, and we've got to get that hardware installed for there. After that, it is the easy stuff. Then we get to do the fun stuff. We get to paint it. We're doing white with some pine trees and stars that we're gonna spackle it with. Uh, it's gonna be a real fun paint job. Maybe I'll include that or maybe I'll just show it once it's finished. I don't know if people really wanna see a time lapse of a paint job, but hey, maybe you do. So we'll throw it in here. Um, and if you hate it, sorry. <laughs> um, so, that's it for right now. I'm gonna take some lunch break, uh, get some grub, um, and uh, get what I need from the hardware store to do really the next steps. Oh, by the way, that still has to be sanded. Yeah, I have to refinish sand this. This should be nice and dry by now. So quick re-sand of that with some 320 uh, to close up those gaps. And then, um, yeah, the majority of the frame's done. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, this probably isn't the end of the video, but if it is, like and subscribe, share with your friends. All right guys, so um, what I was planning on doing isn't gonna work out. Um, I'll kind of show you what I was gonna do, um, but uh, I did a test and I'm gonna need to have a little bit of time before I can get that good. Um, so getting real for a minute, this build has been a lot of fun. Um, I've had a good time doing this, even though it's been a ton of work, it's been a lot of effort uh, and a lot of hours sanding, um, it has been really fun. And part of why I'm trying to make this as good quality as possible is I want this bed frame to outlive me. I want it to outlive my daughter. I want it to outlive my daughter's daughter. Um, I want it to be a family heirloom. I want it to be kind of a legacy item, I guess. Um, we currently have one of those, actually. My dad, when my brother was born, or slightly before, he built a cradle. Um, my brother slept in it. I slept in it. My brother's kids slept in it. My daughter slept in it. And it's actually sitting just up above us right now um, in our house. And it's something that'll probably be passed down through the generations because it was built right, and it's going to last a hell of a lot longer than my dad, than me, or my brother, or possibly even our kids. Um, so it was important to me to make this thing as solid and well-constructed as possible, so that when Morgan becomes a, you know, adult, 
and has kids of her own, her kids can have it. So what I was going to do was I was going to engrave her name on it. I actually set that up over there. I got that one sanded. Um, and I took a test piece of 2x6 and my quarter inch chisel and uh, I got close, um, but I definitely need more time to get really good at this. So that isn't gonna happen, but that's not the end of the world. It doesn't really matter. It was just something nice I was gonna do. Didn't work out. So that's all right, we'll move forward. Maybe in a couple of years down the road when we have our next kid, I'll be able to engrave it then. But I don't have the hand or the skill yet to be able to do that on this bed frame confidently without messing it up.